When I was a child, I used to bury myself where the warm sand met the wet, cold of ocean. I'd hunker down, squinting, trying to spot the fin of a dolphin, the spout of a whale, and even the glorious, iridescent tail of a mermaid. As a child, I was captivated by their mystery, part human, part fish, the bridge between both worlds I loved. The ocean was endless then, full of bounty and comfort. Now that I am grown, I know the truth, that these great oceans hold the very essence of life on Earth. Take my hand, take my hand, yeah, take my hand. And yet since the time I was a child, humans have brought this once boundless ocean to the verge of collapse. So what has become of the mermaid in our modern world? Is she simply a myth, or is she the human face of the sea crying out for help? Mermaids have always been popular. Merfolk and gods of the sea were revered by the Babylonians and flourished in the mythology of ancient Greece and Rome, celebrated as the source of life and livelihood, as well as beauty and inspiration. And they have also represented our fear of the sea, its danger and destructive force embodied by seductive sirens and selkies who lure sailors to their death. And mermaid sightings are well documented throughout history. In 1608, the English navigator and explorer Henry Hudson wrote in his log, June 15, this morning, one of our company looking overboard saw a mermaid. They saw her tail, which was like the tail of a porpoise and speckled like a mackerel. As late as the 19th century, British law claimed that any mermaid found in home waters was the property of the crown. In 1719, Louis Renard included a mermaid in his compendium of marine life. Sea wife, a monster resembling a siren, it was 59 inches long and in proportion as an eel. And today, there is a mermaid in New York City. They've captured our imaginations, not only in TV shows and blockbuster movies. A mermaid, Jack. Ask any mermaid you happen to see. But in hundreds of commercials and ad campaigns, company logos and brand names. Mermaids. And thousands upon thousands of books. Not to mention the Coney Island Mermaid Parade. There's certainly no shortage of mermaids in pop culture. But I wonder, in the frenzy of modern day marketing, has her message been lost? The ocean is a place of power, of saltiness and sand, of rhythms and waves, like heartbeats. The same vibrant pulse spans nearly 70% of the planet, connecting us all. Humans are more than 70% salt water, like the ocean. We cry salty tears. We create new life in a saline womb. The mysteries of who we are are intricately connected to the sea. And yet that connection is in danger of being severed. The ecosystem in the ocean are getting less and less viable. At the moment, the big thing that has affected the ocean is fisheries. It is almost as if we use our military to fight the animals of the ocean. And 
we are gradually winning the war and exterminating them. We've eaten more than 90% of the big fish in the sea. Using Google Earth, you can witness trawlers in China, the North Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, shaking the foundation of our life support system, leaving plumes of death in their path. For every pound that goes to market, more than 10 pounds, even 100 pounds, may be thrown away as bycatch. This is the consequence of not knowing that there are limits to what we can take out of the sea. But it's not just what we're taking out of the ocean. We're causing fundamental changes to the ocean itself. Overproduction of carbon dioxide is turning our oceans acidic and threatening the ocean's food web. As carbon dioxide dissolves in the ocean, it becomes like a soda pop. You can try in a glass of Coke, you can digest meat. You can digest bones, and you can imagine a live animal that has a shell. 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, life in the ocean will be compromised. Sea life also has to contend with plastic pollution, covering millions of square miles of our ocean. Plastic that never disappears. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller particles that are ingested by wildlife as are PCBs and mercury from industrial waste, which accumulate in the fish we eat, causing serious health risks, especially for pregnant women and children. Jellyfish, whose natural predator is the endangered sea turtle, are proliferating to such an extent the condition has now been called ocean jellification. and offshore oil drilling has shown us its terrible impact. This is a public health situation that is beyond belief that we are not addressing in a radical way. I wanted to help stop this destruction, but how? As I gazed out into the open water, I was given the guidance I was searching for. In many of the conventional myths around the world, a man falls in love with a mermaid and brings her to land where she trades in her tail for legs. All she asks for are uninterrupted times to herself when she can return to her sacred place, the water. Jealously, her husband spies on her and their love is lost forever. He has broken the pact of mutual understanding and respect. We are doing the same with the ocean. Like the mermaid, the ocean needs time to rest, to protect the fish and the ecosystem that we all depend on for survival. But we don't give it a break. We don't stop. That's a tragedy. Everybody knows that it is going to end badly. But, but still, you feel obliged to do the things that are leading you to your doom. It's a tragedy. We've added a fourth R onto the front of the Reduce, Reuse, Recycle three R's, and that is refuse. Whenever possible, refuse single-use and disposable plastics. This is a huge problem in the oceans, but this is a problem that we've created as consumers and we can solve. Over one billion people rely on fish protein for food. If we can protect the ecosystems, they can rebuild themselves and continue to give us what we need to survive. How do we keep fish on our menus? For the past 50 years, we've been fishing the seas like we clear-cut forests. It's hard to overstate the destruction. So for better or for worse, aquaculture, fish farming, is going to be part of our future. Appropriate aquaculture is one way to let our oceans rest. Sustainable fishing methods that protect wild fish is another way to protect the ocean's health and those who depend on it for their livelihood. Finding alternative forms of energy, such as solar and wind power, 
can also help our oceans rest. The mission to save the ocean has already begun. People from all walks of life are becoming ocean activists, bringing awareness to the grave issues facing our seas. My belief is if we can feel these issues, if we can feel these things more deeply, then they'll matter to us. This belief is shared by artists around the globe who are using their talents to raise awareness in unusual ways. I dream of places as pristine as when I was a child. And now I have children who also love to sink into the ocean, to splash and shimmy through her strong waves. At times I catch them side by side, gazing out at the sparkling sea and wonder if they too are dreaming of mermaids. And I want them to know our oceans are not beyond repair. Each of us must act now so that together we can save our oceans and all that is wild, and in so doing, save ourselves. Dive in. Take